the Chase Thomas Podcast. For people who have nothing but time to kill. Made the point here um, in one of his VolQuest articles today. For in the program, Brent. He, he said, quote, they had a turnover on downs and three straight punts, gaining 55 total yards. And the Orange Bowl, they had a stretch of four straight punts, where they gained a total of 26 yards. This was something that I had jotted down following the clip where I pushed the brakes, pumped the brakes on how people were discussing Joe Milton and this offense post Hinden Hooker, like over the long term. I think this is still going to be very rocky. I don't think Joe has changed all that much. Like he ran the ball a lot more than I thought they were going to design runs for Joe Milton because he's taken some shots. And I mean, obviously he had the great stiff arm on uh, that poor Virginia uh, corner at one point in this game. But I think something that I gathered. And also, let's just go ahead and say, I don't think it's a coincidence that the drives where Jalen Wright was nowhere to be found were the drives where Tennessee's offense stalled. And let's just say it sucked. Like those drives were bad. Those drives were quick. And the defense had to go back on the field. And in a previous era, the Tennessee defense is not looking good. And Tennessee might be in a more mercurial spot than where they were yesterday. Just because they're deeper and the defense is a lot better. And Virginia is struggling with this, that, and the other. But I think the way I look at this is this is going to be a significantly more balanced Tennessee team than what we've seen last year. So the fans who are waiting and they're like, oh, it's just game one, tweak one. Let's see what happens over the next couple of weeks. We're going to see the fireworks. It's going to start to trickle back. I don't think the fireworks are coming. I think this is going to be a very safe, very quick at the line of scrimmage. A lot of screens. We saw a lot here. A lot of stuff to the back, the, the running backs. We saw a lot of stuff there. I don't think they are going to be nearly as comfortable. Joe was one of six on balls 20 plus yards downfield. One of them was a big drop by Rommel, but by and large, still a lot of misses. The touch isn't the same as Hendon. I, I just look at it. The interceptions are not coming. He completed 70% of his passes, and it was why I was saying all offseason, I'm like, I'm not worried about Joe's completion percentage. Like, hype old guys, like, they eventually figure it out, and they don't throw picks, and they have high completion percentages. Like, that's just going to happen. Joe will be fine there. I just look at this year's offense. Dylan Sampson, four TDs. Jalen Wright, Jabari Small they carried the load when things went astray like those three kept tennessee afloat when the lot the receivers were not in sync and this is just something i think is going to be the the key, not the key just the theme of this year's tennessee volunteers team and i'm very curious to see what that means for where the offense is scoring like you look through pff it's not like they're in the top 10 through this week like this was a bad i shouldn't say bad this was a bad in terms of what we've seen from josh heupel through two years offensive showing by and large I don't know why if you figured out what happened with Jalen Wright why he was just absent for so many drives in a row because it was evident and that was something I'd written down like if Jalen's out like this is this is a problem because I think we my biggest takeaway and I've said it over and over again Jalen Wright is the difference maker Jalen Wright has made the leap I don't know if he's Alvin Kamara but he is going to be the next big running back taken early in an NFL draft and Tennessee hasn't had that guy in a really long time. And it's, it's fun. It's just fans are going to take a couple weeks, I think to get used to the fact that the high, the flying Jalen Hyatt, deep balls, deep shots. I think that's not happening this year. I think it might be back next year with Nico and company. I don't think it's happening this year. I think they're going to play it safe and try and run it down your throat. Well, you just had a lot there. So a lot of, a lot of process. You just put a I lot told on you that I miss these shows. Well, you said, you just asked why Jalen Wright was absent for multiple yeah. drives. I'll answer that one first. Um, Tennessee played what you called – you didn't call bad, uh, but underwhelming offensive mm. game, and they won by 36 points. That's why Jalen Wright <laughs> – you didn't see Jalen Wright every play. It's okay. a position that puts a lot on puts a lot on uh, the running backs or a position that puts a lot of physical burden on, on a, someone that carries the ball a lot. And when Tennessee pouts its depth, uh, all offseason they do it. And their three best rush, three top rushers back. In a game like that, they were going to split the carries. And even as clearly better, and Jalen Wright was clearly the best running back. Mm-hmm. When and you're right, in those drives they stalled. It was Jabari Small uh, and Jalen Wright on the field, not Jalen Wright, uh, Dylan Sampson on the field. But even mm-hmm. those drives, or even Dylan Sampson and Jabari Small still had good rushing averages. Like they still run the brand ball overall effective, not at the same level. So it's easier trying to get all those guys involved. You're not trying to work anyone too hard in a game. You're going to win again by 36 points. 
Tennessee heads to Florida. That game's competitive. Tennessee plays South Carolina and then those games are competitive. That's when if it's still 33, 33, 33 on the carries between those three, that's when the criticism will be very valid. I think by then you'll be seeing Jalen Wright getting 60% of the carries from that group. Uh, at least 50%, I think probably close to 60%. So that's my thought on that. Agree. Yeah, he I think was... it should be 60, 30, 10. Like 60, Jalen, 30, Dylan, and then 10, Jabari. Jabari is just a vulture back now. Like it's time to transition to vulture goal line guy, Jabari Small. Yeah, I mean, that's that to me, what we're just saying, the 60 to third or 60, 30, 10. Mm. I think it's more, much more likely you get the 60 from Jalen Wright than you only get 10 from Jabari Small. I just don't see yeah. him having that small uh, of a role. Um, Again, like I agree with you from the logical standpoint of I think he's Tennessee's third uh, most talented running back. Dylan Sampson and Jalen Wright are both more talented, but he's just solid and they have so much trust in him that I don't think you're going to see his role diminish that much in his senior season. On to the offense as a whole, I mean, it's not gonna, compared to last year, like, no, it's not going to be the fireworks because Tennessee hit like 360 yard touchdowns, felt like every game. So yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. You're just not going to see like the long touchdowns. I don't know if I agree with that. I think you're going to see a lot more Tennessee hit the deep passes to set up the run last year. It's going to be mm. flipped. It's going to be old school football and that Tennessee wants to run the ball to bring guys into the box and get favorable matchups down the field. Uh, and then you're going to see them take those shots. And I think they will hit, hit more of those shots. I felt like the game plan was pretty vanilla against Virginia. Maybe that is how it's going to be the entire season. Um, and, and there's still, you know, question marks about what Joe can do uh, throwing the ball in the intermediate and down the field. So maybe, maybe that is the case. Uh, I kind of not go quite that far after game one. And I just would side more with what you said of this being a run first offense that wants to win with running the, running the football first um, unless it necessarily the deep shots and the, the deep passing plays are, are going to fall with that. And that's okay. Like you can still win a lot of games, and I think it's just good that like some years that's just it's just personnel. The personnel will continue yeah, to change. Yeah, it's called good coaching. Yeah, like that's yeah, and I think that's the thing is like I don't want to harp on the negative in terms of like, look Tennessee, the sky is falling, this that and the other. I'm just saying it's gonna be different. And Joe being a like Heisman type quarterback is not coming. Like they are, <laughs> this is going to be a run. If anyone in this offense has a Heisman type year it's Jalen Wright like that's what I was you're thinking about at. that didn't we have a conversation like that in the off season where you were saying what? that yeah that Jalen Wright was more likely to win the Heisman than Joe yeah no I, I still disagree with that just from like Jalen Wright's not going to get enough carries Jalen what Wright I'm saying might... is if he did he would be in that conversation if he was treated yeah, as I mean... like the guy getting 80 percent of the carries and touches then I think he has in this offense would have that kind of lane if Tennessee wins enough games like I, I very much see the path to like Jalen Wright being, you know, getting some Heisman votes where Joe Milton doesn't, or theoretically yeah. being higher on the list. But just the ceiling that Jalen Wright has to win the Heisman is, you know, I'm not. I think Joe Milton's going to win the Heisman, but that that ceiling is much, much higher for him. I think more attainable. Where I, I don't really think it is for Wright. Um, what was when you look at the special teams? D. Williams giveth, D. Williams taketh, bad fumble. Um, at one point, um, but he also had some big runs. He's still just an unbelievably dangerous returner, and it's just fun to yep. have guys like D. Williams on your team um, because he could break one at any given moment, and that's just going to be fun every week. But he's also someone who, if he gets hit weird or he does, there like there was another plate where he like had put his heels in the end zone um, to down it on the one, and you're like, okay, what are we doing? Um, there was a couple of those, so it's just I think it's just going to be that kind of kind of year, and you just kind of have to live with it. But in terms of Jackson Ross. Ryan, we you and I talked a lot last year about Paxton Brooks and like the sleepy little thing of like maybe why Tennessee was going for it a lot and they were very aggressive was just that like Paxton was one of the worst SEC punters um, a season ago and you thought it couldn't get worse in terms of...